welcome to another episode of Treknicity, the show where we talk about Star Trek. I'm Lars. And I'm Patrick, and what is with the opener? You're just, you're losing it. I'm f- I swear. I'm not phoning it in, I swear, I promise. But of course not. In this episode, we're going to step away from our normal Star Trek conversations for a bit to discuss the situation with uh, Wizards of the Coast, Dungeons and Dragons, and the open gaming license controversy. And to bring it back to Trek, because this is Treknicity, we're going to about talk about some Star Trek RPGs. Most recently, and most specifically, uh, Star Trek uh, Star Trek Adventures from Modifius Entertainment. Hey, you got your copy too. Yep. Do, 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 are you do. are you going to Bookster Bay with it too? While we're at it. Uh, look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course you are. Right. So let's get in. So let's get into the news, which has been breaking since the third of January, and is kind of gotten crazy. So, just because a lot of our viewers are not going to be familiar with, let me explain some things. Uh, back in two thousand, Wizards of the Coast released the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. With that, they released what's called the Open Gaming License. The Open Gaming License basically allows perpetual right to publish using a small portion of the Dungeons & Dragons content called the System Resource Document, or SRD. This is stuff that creators could use, take it into, and create their own content on top of that. It has functioned for 22, we've gotten 23 years so far of this Omen Gaming license. It has spawned countless creative companies, it's spawned at least one major competitor in the form of Paizo and their Pathfinder system, which was basically a version of 3.5, created partially because 4th edition sucked and partially because of the, what is it, Uh, the license that they put, the license they tried to replace, Wizards of Coast tried to replace back in when they brought in 4th ED, 4th edition, they tried to change the license then. Not mm-hmm. touching the original OGL, but bringing their GSL, or Game System License, which sucked, and unsurprisingly, 4th edition completely failed. Mm. Well, and, and, I mean, it was a shitty game anyways. It had a few things, but it, I digress. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Wizards of the Coast, uh, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divert, or sorry, I am going to defer to you Mostly because you have been keeping a much closer eye on what's been going on with it. I'm I'm familiar with the highlight points, but you've been reading um, quite a bit more about it. Yeah, it, the past three streams and the past few days, I've been scroll I've been doom scrolling this. When I wasn't doing other things, I was listening to coverage and news and updates on this. So here's what we here's what happened. Late December, Wizards of the Coast, the owners of D&D, made an announcement that they were going to be updating the OGL. They were going to start putting some royalties for the 20 or so big people, big companies that use it. Hmm. And it was not going to be, other than that, it was going to be the same for almost everybody. January 3rd, the actual document leaked. Hmm. We found out a few things. The royalty was going to be on anything over $750,000. They would take 25% of the revenue. Mm-hmm. Long story short, it's basically enough revenue that if you may, if you try to make enough money to have a company, you're going to be drained dry by this and destroyed. Yeah, so, so that, you, can't, is that, you can't grow a company. Is that $750,000 in profit or total sales? Revenue. Revenue, right. not profit. Hmm. The second thing, they wizards had wizards wiped out is what going to wipe out the original OGL, which was supposed to be forever. They're going to wipe it out. They want to wipe it out and declare that and declare this new one, which they can modify or change or terminate for any reason with thirty days notice. In other words, if they don't like your product or they want to crush you, nope. And you're in trouble. Or yeah, they want to lower that cap. Yeah, they can do that. Hmm. The third and the worst of the worst, because I could justify, I can understand the revenue, 
wanting to get a small part of that. They were shot way too damned high. I can understand wanting to be able to have more control over the license so that if something you don't like is there, you have control. But So you don't get another... Um, so you don't get an even sexier... Uh, what's the name of the book? I can't remember it. The uh, Book of Erotic Fantasy? Uh, they could kill one. Hmm. This new license could let him kill it. Yes, that exists for 3-5. You may not want to look it up. Um, and the worst of them all, they have the right to take and use anything created under the new OGL as their own. They own the creator's shit. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. That, that is a thousand <laughs> times bullshit. Yeah, that's, that's unforgivable in a creative environment. Yeah. And the, and the worst thing is, this was not a draft version. This was apparently the final version they sent with contracts to some people, with, of course, an NDR, because non-disclosure saves their ass. Mm. But still, I mean, <coughs> you know, we've been playing we've been playing D&D, or we've been playing role-playing games. I've been playing since about 14, I think you just, just briefly after that, later. like maybe a couple years later, as when you started playing, um, <clears throat> playing role-playing games. Um and yeah, so, which we'll talk about later because one of our because my first real experience involves Trek ish. Trek ish. Uh, maybe that should yeah. the na- maybe that should name it be the name of the new show, Trek ish. Okay. <laughs> um, so basically, the groundswell began at that point. There was a lot of people commenting, a lot of videos being made, people screaming and raising hell. An open D&D letter popped up. I think I signed off and dropped it. Calling for everybody to join. Major major producers, um, Cobalt Press and MCDM in particular, announced they're just going to build new... They're going to build new game engines. Um, Paizo is going to purge things. Um, Castles and Crusades, their company... Um, That's Cobalt Press, Troll, right? Troll Lord Games. Oh, Troll Lord, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Troll Lord Games, they actually, um, and I caught this on live stream, they're working to purge SRD stuff out of their game, which they've, they're have they running on their own engine, but for ease of use, they basically magic, they sw- brought Magic Missile and all the other SRD quality spells into their game, although they changed some things. So they're going to re- do some renaming and stuff of stuff that's proprietary enough that it might fall under SRD. But that was... Um... But the thing uh, is, uh, the yeah. uh, Castles and Crusades, that was built off of, or was built off the old AD&D infrastructure, wasn't it? There, Yeah, the, the base influence, a lot of the, some of the base stuff looks like it came from the second, from the pre-3.5, the pre-3rd edition era. Hmm. But yeah, they, they've, they've evolved it into their own game. And you're going to see, we're going to see a lot of that. Um, apparently there was another leak from somebody inside Wizards saying that the big thing that Hasbro, the owner of Wizard of the Coast and them, are looking at is D&Z subscriptions because that's the one that affects them most. So needless to say, a, they, their servers crashed with the number of people trying to unsubscribe. Wow. I dropped my subscription, so they're not getting that stream anymore, and a shit ton more people did too. Wow. Um, <clears throat> Paizo from... The, the creators of Pathfinder, they're working. They've announced that they're working on something called the Open RPG Creative License or ORC license, and it's really and it's basically their attempt to create a proper open gaming license. And more than likely, this is going to be something that's going to be put in the hands of a third party and protected forever. Basically, we release under all this and. Even I, even here at Redshirt Geeks, I'm starting. I've started the process of building our own RPG. I don't know if it will get all the way to a finished product or not. Depends on if I can stay sane enough and make everything cogent enough. <clears throat> but we'll be working on that. So we're gonna have something, and I already figured out how to, how to make it go into space adventures. So you could theoretically run a Star Trek adventure using our system. <laughs> Although we're gonna talk about some others. So we are. Yeah. So, yeah, if you are if you are anywhere in the RPG sphere as well and you play anything Dungeons and Dragons, obviously, if you own the books, 
and you're still play and you're in the middle of a game when you're you're in one we're in one and I'm in a second one we're going to still play D&D but the big thing is we don't want to get the big thing is cut off wizards mm. say no more wizards of the coast yep. yeah it's over I'm not one for so. buying buying the books anyways I mean I do have a few of them um Primarily because yeah. they were gifted I have from the book you. Of the damned right here, so yeah, I've got the PHB on, on my my bookshelf here, and I still have downstairs in our game game area uh, the the three set um, PHB yeah. DM's guide and monster manual that you gave me yeah. that you gifted yeah. to my wife and I. Yeah, and again, it's it's a matter of choice how you handle this, but the more we get, the more we get away, the more we hurt wizards of the coast in this the better because one because really the goal here at this point is you give us back the srd the way it was you could do whatever you want with the new game stop threatening us with lawyers mm. and yeah uh, and uh at the end of this at the end of this uh or sorry when we're, we're all wrapped up with the, uh, filming this episode and getting it uh launched um i will include uh a video that peter adkinson who was uh, one of the for, he was the, one of the former owners of Wizards of the Coast uh, dropped on Facebook today um, with that basically says how he feels about the changes to the OGL. And we'll drop a few more links. The Open D and D letter. I think there's a Change.org position. Mm. If the biggest thing though, if you subscribe, to, if you do anything on D and D beyond with subscription, it's time to cancel. And if you sign up for a year. You can always cancel it, and you'll be able to use your. And I know this from looking at it. You'll be able to use your content until your subscription runs out. Right. So, for that's me, good. that's two days. Uh, so I got to get on. I got to get on Beyond tomorrow and pull off my important characters and write it down. Because mm. yeah. I'm going to have to. Ma- I'm going to have to take a manual for a while. That's all. I mean, worse things have happened. Oh no. Yeah. So, that's pretty much what's going on there. Which is why we're going to spend the rest of the episode talking about Star Trek games. That's right. Because so because part of get part of fixing the problem with dealing with wizards and their strangle on everything is that we promote other games. And obviously, we could get, talk about a lot of games, a lot of fantasy games, a lot of that. But this is Treknicity, so we're talking Trek. That's right. So, um, so <clears throat> go ahead. So with Star Trek uh, as a role-playing game, um, it has a very storied history, very turbulent one. Um, and uh, originally, uh, back in the 1980s, somebody had the, dis- the had the idea to create a Star Trek-themed role-playing game, and that company was FASA. Uh, and anybody who's familiar with FASA might remember the role-playing games for Doctor Who, uh, Battletech, and, of course, Shadowrun. Um and first edition of shadow run uh first and second i believe ah okay because uh, we played fourth and they're on fifth right now so uh, actually they're on sixth they're on sixth yeah ah. they just dropped six oh, or they're about I didn't to even drop see six. that when i was looking i was looking at stuff i was only seeing fifth so i got i'm behind so sixth i guess yay mm. um yeah and the the idea is that um you know they took the they took the license from uh paramount created a role-playing game completely shat all over it because the idea is, and I, and I do believe that uh, Gene Roddenberry was instrumental in FASA losing their Star Trek RPG license, uh, mainly because uh, Roddenberry wanted to keep the, the, um, the spirit of Star Trek, which was all about exploration and, and adventure. And FASA was turning uh, Star Trek into a basically war game. Um, and in fact, you know, growing up, we were teenagers. Patrick and I spent many hours uh, at his uh, at his parents' um, business playing the tactical combat simulator that was created by um, FASA. Um, so they they created that one. They lost their license, so it kind of stayed in limbo for a little while. Then this other little company came along called Last Unicorn Games, and they actually created a uh, a much more comprehensive game. But at the same time, had less in the way of supplements, kept it a little bit simpler, but expanded on the idea and kept the um, the spirit of the original game. Um, 
they that went on to i think the company either folded or uh were unable to continue so they lost the license so basically couldn't renew it that was then picked up by a company called decipher and that was the first proper um fully printed hardbound version of the role-playing game uh, that ever came out because everything that FASA did was all softbound stuff, you know, paperback style. And uh, it so, was the 80s, dude. Uh, yeah. So Decipher came out and they actually uh, released uh, I wrote the role playing game with some expansions um, and it ran for many years. Uh, it was a pretty decent system. It was pretty easy to, to play. I ran it a few times uh, for some friends in New Zealand. Um, and then it kind of again, it, like it just sort of. Maybe it didn't make enough money. Maybe it just didn't. The company couldn't stay viable long enough to renew the license. Um, but they lost it in the end. And now, now we have this one: Star Trek Adventures by Modifius. Uh, Modifius yeah. Entertainment. Modifius Entertainment. Yep. Right there. Modifius yeah. Entertainment. So um, yeah, we've. Been... And so, they've yeah. got they've I... got uh, they've got supplements out the wazoo. Yeah. But it's yeah, a good I've system. Seen... Just with the online character creation, yeah, I've seen there's a, I've seen there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and there's probably more on top of that. But yeah, I mean, I've got I've got uh, a few of the supplements myself. I've got the these are the voyages, which are um, some some uh, pre made adventures. I've got the Alpha Quadrant. Uh, I think I've got the Beta Quadrant, and I've got op- the Operations um, uh, supplement as well. Um, so I'm looking. Yeah, I mean, but again, they put and they put them out like like every year. Like we're getting more and more, and they're also releasing regular content, including uh, pre-designed missions. And um, if I don't, I mean, I, I I've talked about it enough throughout the um, throughout the seasons of Treknicity, like the last 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 three now, um, about one of my favorite podcasts to listen to, which fi- which Patrick's finally gotten into, uh, which is the Starship Tempest one, and that is a live live play. Um, where they actually the episodes are them playing the game and and then creating the content as they go along uh which actually surprisingly it's more lower decks than it is um next generation i wonder why yeah well still it's funny you know that's the that's the best part about it is um they don't and i mean they, they get really into the meat and potatoes of it but what's really cool about it is because Modifius made such a an easy to follow system, it's easy to follow the content of the podcast because you don't like just listening to it. You can learn the rules just listening to them play, um, and it's pretty simple. I mean, you're rolling to you you have a couple stats that you use. Yep. You roll d twenties for that, and yeah, and, and then, then there's some d sixes in play, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, you have I mean, a couple things like you have momentum and threat, and that's it, and that's. You know, I mean, for the most part, they and designed... a lot of narration and role play in the spirit of Star Trek. Also, Thanks. blowing shit up because if you're gonna have a game, you gotta. If you're gonna play a game, yeah, Gene was wrong on that one. You gotta blow shit up sometimes. Well, well Gene was never wasn't about. He didn't say you you couldn't have combat. What he was about, what it was about, is is the the drama was more about learning about ourselves and and actually taking moral moral lessons from life around us. And, and then we get the last few seasons of DS9. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, you know, DS9 only came out after he died. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, they were holding, they were waiting. I mean, as much as I hate to say, they they were waiting for him. But anyways, yeah. So the role playing yeah, game. I mean, yeah. um, that's the that's the best part about it. Okay. So um, the reason why we talk about role playing games and we talk about um, the STA uh, Star Trek Adventures specifically is because this is a good example of building a role-playing game system without being beholden to the d20 mo- uh, model that tsr created when they created Gen- dungeons and dragons um and that's the best part about all this is that there are so many different choices like when you were like when patrick and i were first getting into role-playing and um we were teenagers there were other options. I mean, there were other games we were playing, but they weren't necessarily like super well developed, and they were kind of homogenized, and uh, you know, they all had very common elements of each other. Now you get role playing games that will completely go off left field, 
and it's great because they're interesting and they're fun. And there's so much creativity out there. Hmm. Which, by the way, the the eighty the seventies and the early eighties were the era first eras of D and D that fell off as other games that were more into the more into role playing came in like Vampire the Masquerade, for example. Hmm. When we got to 2000, D&D resurged, but that's where we got OGL, which is literally has allowed the game to explode in every direction. Spin-offs, I think there was at least one Star Wars version of that used the the D20. The, uh, th- yeah, use those rules. There's countless, but this creativity let's put this way. The OGL is probably responsible for this book existing in a sense because so many people got into it, so many ideas, but others would take a take the ideas and spring with them. Now, I think Star Trek Adventures doesn't have any open gaming content, but that's fine. It's a fairly niche game. Right. It's not so. it is not as wide rating or wide appealing as Dungeons and Dragons is, um, and of course, yeah. in pop, popular culture, you know, a lot more people know about D and D and play D and D and are familiar with it. I mean, again, although those numbers are going down when, in flames. When we first started playing role playing games, we were the niche. Dungeons and Dragons was only for, for nerds and geeks, you know, and people with no yeah. life. Now it's and, for everybody because nobody has a whole life. <laughs> well, it was for everybody. Yeah. Now everybody gets to try some different games. Exactly. Which, yeah, I've got, I've got the one I'm building. Plus, I'm looking at about two or three or four different systems that I'm going to explore into, not counting the ones I already own, so that I can get the hell away from this bullshit. Speaking because, of, because speaking of games, yeah. speaking of playing games, um, in the very near future, uh, for anybody who's interested, Patrick and I will be playing. Star Trek Adventures, wherein I will run, <laughs> I will run him through a series of adventures uh, as a captain of a California class starship, specifically the USS San Dimas, the most excellent adventures of the USS San Dimas. If we could get it sorted out and figured out, and of course, ideally get some other players, we'll see. So anybody um, wants to play, anybody interested in playing a Star Trek role playing game, just hit us up. But that we promise said, it won't be like our first Star Trek role playing experience. You had to bring it up. You had, I had to bring, to bring it up Hammond Trek. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because, the yeah. well, <laughs> thing is, on the Red Shirt Geeks um, channel, we used to live stream. Uh, what was it? Tales of the Wilderness, um, where you oh, and I, yeah. yeah, you and I, where you, each episode, you and I would would trade off the D, the GM um, role. We and, were playing our characters uh, from that game, right? Trapped in a D and D world. It was glorious. Oh, I still remember the the um, let's see, there was the the Super Mario World where we uh, played. We had uh, a visit or, or two from Pickle Rick. Um, oh my goodness. Anyways, so yeah, yeah that was, was where we started. Shit. Still better than Hammond Trek. Speaking of Hammond Trek, that's all the time we have for this episode of Dragonicity. <laughs> yeah. First, uh, you want to plug some other shit. Yeah, just so, dropped. so you see Let's this. Plug the okay. other thing that's just dropped. Yeah, so see this stuff down here. If you're looking for us on social media, that's where you're going to find us, okay? Uh, second of all, um, a, a, an episode of the Trexperts quiz uh, featuring Patrick and I doing their first lower decks quiz. And I'm not going to spoil it for you as to who won, um, but it is very entertaining and apparently getting a lot of traction right now. So please, if you're interested in Star Trek trivia, Go over and check out Trexpert's quiz. I will have the links and everything on how to find them on social media um, right here in the description of this video. Um, otherwise, oh. yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who are now visiting this, and this is the first video watching because of the Trexpert's podcast, you walked into hell this time. <laughs> yeah. You, you, have, you, you only have yourselves to blame. You walked into OG hell. <laughs> That's right. That being said, <laughs> that is all the time. Again, all the time we have for, for this episode of Trekknessity. Hell it. Yeah. As like, always here on Trekknessity, we, re- we encourage you to rock out what you spock out. 
We'll see and you. Fuck Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks. Yeah.